Departure procedures for the Jayco. The first thing you'll need to do is to fold in the beds. Pull down on the extension bar, push the button, and then pull the extension bar towards you. This will fold the entire side into the bed itself. After the bar is near you, you're going to remove the, the extension pole and you're going to place it inside the mattress for storage. Then you're going to fold up the mattress and secure it to the front of the bunk with the attachment straps. This will be the position that it will travel in. Now it's time to see what to do on the outside. Pull the vinyl tent cover up off the corners and off all the sides. Tuck them into the middle of the tent. As you lift the door, assure that everything falls into the middle. When you start to close it, check that none of the fabric is sticking out. If it is, open it back up and push in any material that's sticking out. You don't want any moisture getting into the camper itself. Finally, make sure to lock the doors. We normally only lock the passenger side door. As long as one side is locked, it will not come open while you're towing it. Now it's time to fold up the back bed. Again, you're going to pull the extension bar towards you, making all the material come towards you. The extension bar will then come off and be stored inside the mattress itself. The mattress will flip up. In this case, it will be tucked behind the wall instead of using straps. Once again, you now close it from the outside, making sure to tuck in all the material. Always check the top. That's where the material tends to get jammed up most commonly. Once the door is closed, lock it on the passenger side. Now it's time to tend to the awning. As you're pulling the awning in, Please use a broom to sweep off any leaves that have gathered on top, especially if they're sticky because maybe they're a little bit wet. Otherwise, it's sort of like pressing leaves in a book. They'll leave a nasty stain on the underside of that awning. If it's fairly dry when you're doing this, most of the leaves will fall off by themselves as you're rolling it in. However, if you're having to do this in the early morning, when it's still dewy outside, you may have to help those leaves along. Now let's turn off the propane. There are two propane tanks, so hence there are two valves. You're going to want to turn them both clockwise at the same time. Turning them simultaneously will decrease the pressure on the regulator. The only reason you'd want to leave your propane on is if you're traveling a long distance and you're concerned that your food may spoil in the fridge. Now we need to raise and clear the stabilizer legs at all four corners of the trailer. To make this faster, we have a drill with a special drill bit attachment. that will speed it up. However, if there's a considerable amount of weight on them or you're just having trouble with them, there is also a manual crank available in the storage bin. Most of the times, the drill will work great and speed up this process. On the back, the attachments are off to the sides instead of straight back but the procedure is exactly the same. Now it's time to raise the tongue in the coupler. This will allow us to back up the vehicle, bringing the ball under the coupler. You will also need to slide the coupler lock backwards and position it so that the coupler can engage the ball. Now back the car up so you can position the ball directly under the coupler. It helps to have an assistant guiding you for this step. 
once the vehicle is in position, you can now start lowering the coupler onto the ball. You'll also need to make sure that the coupler lock slides to the forward position so that you'll be able to safely pin it to lock it into place. As you continue to lower the ball, the red foot should start coming up. Sometimes it needs a little extra push to get it to go. Eventually it will lock into place. Now that the trailer is attached to the vehicle, it's time to add your safety chains. Make sure you cross them under the vehicle. You want to also make sure that you add the pin to the coupler lock to keep it from opening back up. Next, secure the brake chain. This is just a little cord that assures that your brakes on the trailer will engage should the vehicle and the trailer for some reason come apart. And then we want the lights plugged in. I run the power cord to the lights around the chain just to keep it from dragging on the ground. Next, you want to install your weight distribution arms. There will be one on the right and one on the left side. After both are in place, we'll swing them towards the back where the chains will secure them to the saddle. Be careful not to lose the little pins that attach to the saddle as they're really hard to find in the sand. The chains attach to the saddle just underneath the edge of the propane tank, so you'll need to lift the propane cover a little bit to attach them. I apologize that that's difficult to see here. On the other side it's a little bit clearer. Also the chain is not necessarily going to attach on the very first link, usually the third or fourth depending on the size of your vehicle. Again, you're going to secure it with a pin just under the edge of that propane tank cover. The next step is to secure the sway bar. Again, there are pins that hold this into place, so be careful not to lose those. There's a little ball on the coupler where it attaches on one side, and then a little bit further back on the tongue. Secure the sway bar with pins. There are two holes that it needs to slide in through on the front and the back. Then engage it by twisting it in a clockwise direction until you feel a little bit of tension. No need to crank down on this. Your rear view mirror will be of no use to you with the big camper behind you, so you'll be relying on your side mirrors. If your vehicle does not have particularly large side mirrors or extendable mirrors, Please attach the provided mirrors. After attaching the safety cord, simply twist in a clockwise direction. Remove your wheel chucks. Test your lights. This should include your right blinker, your left blinker, as well as your brakes, and then of course your running lights. Retract the entry step. Also pick up and stow any leveling blocks. The final step is to make sure all doors and storage bins are properly closed and locked. Now is also a good time to take one last walk around the camper and make sure you haven't forgotten anything. Like perhaps that power cord still sticking out. Don't forget to test your brakes as you pull out. Now have a safe journey.